Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, welcome to Coffee and Crypto. This is the show where we come at you 9.30 Eastern every single weekday morning to bring you the latest price action updates. Today, we are going to be talking about Bitcoin because as you already know, Bitcoin breached $50,000 this morning, and right now, we are on the very cusp of a massive break to the upside. In fact, in this video, I'm going to show you why fifty dollars to $53,000, that zone, is the gate and key that will lead us all the way back to six. $63,000 and $65,000 back to all-time high in 100 k and beyond in the next several months. Right now, a critical decision point is in play, and we need to see Bitcoin break through these levels. And funnily enough, two super indicators, two different technical indicators that I've been watching, one of them for about six months and using every single day, one of them that just landed on my desk a couple of weeks ago and I've been experimenting with. Both of these indicators are giving us very strong signals that we're about to go into a massive uptrend. we got a great show lined up for you today. I cannot wait to dive on into it. If you do enjoy today's video, make sure to hit that like button. Let's see if we can't get to a thousand likes really quickly. Unfortunately, we are not joined by Tim today. He is not feeling well. He's got a head cold. He is hopefully going to be back tomorrow. We're praying for him. Any of our believers out there, please be praying for him as well. He hopefully will be feeling better. But I am joined as always by Smay, our producer. How you doing, Smay? Hello, everybody. I have uh, something to say. Guys, Jeb, first I want to ask you something. Do we love our grandmasters? We love our grandmasters. We love our we grandmasters. How much do we love our grandmasters? They are spectacular. They have beautiful, wonderful faces. So if we love our grandmasters, that means we really, really want them to get their perks, right? Oh, yeah. We definitely want them to get okay. their perks. Okay. So their here, perks. and that leads me into what I'm about to say. Guys, there are two of you grandmasters oh. that after all my begging, all my begging, have not filled out the form oh, no. to get your perks. The form is in the community tab on our YouTube channel. And oh, I have to tell you guys no. something. I'm going to say them by name. Oof. Dennis Pizarka. Getting called out. You got to You got to go fill out that form, you my get guy. Your perks. And then Edward Hess. Please Edward go Hess, fill out that on, form. Man. And every other member, guys. If you And also, if you just also became a member, please go check the community tab on our YouTube channel. Fill out that form. That's what you need to do. Where can people sign up for the memberships, man? Guys, you can sign up for the membership. In a, there's a join button right next to the subscribe button. And you can get all signs of fantastic perks that we are working to send out as long as you fill out the form. And then, also, you can. Uh, there's a link in the description, guys. So, please, please. Boom sauce. Check it out. We got a lot of people saying nice glasses, Smay. I think you were absolutely right. Guys, we're going to jump into a ton of bullish technicals. We're going to run our first segment from about a minute from now until 10 o'clock at the top of the hour. But first, I want to tell you what our show is brought to you because today our show is brought to you by Lux Algo. It is the indicator that I have been using for the last four months or so. I use it every single day. And in this video, the reason that it is bringing you this show is because it is bringing you this analysis. One of the two super indicators that we're going to be talking about is Lux Algo. And for the first time in a long time, time, it has flashed a strong buy signal. In fact, it's the first time in over two months. The last time that Lux Algo did this, we had a 50% rally. You can sign up for Lux Algo with 20% off. Down below, use coupon code JEB, J-E-B-B, at checkout, and you will get that discount. But let's go ahead and jump onto my chart. We're going to dive straight on into some technical analysis. For anyone who has not been watching the show lately, I want to catch you up on where we are. Right now, Bitcoin is breaking currently a very important level that we talked about yesterday. We talked about the level of $48,800 as our shoulder line of a potential inverse head and shoulders pattern that looks something like this. Now, I came at you yesterday and I told you, now look, what Bitcoin can do is it can potentially come down here to around uh, $44,500 and then move into an inverse head and shoulders pattern, or Bitcoin can break straight to the upside. Either way, we're looking at a lot of bullishness on Bitcoin. Right now, it looks like Bitcoin is breaking bullish above the shoulder line, but I would encourage you to not get ahead of yourself because it's easy to say, okay, we're breaking the inverse head and shoulders pattern. Our price target of Bitcoin going all the way up here to $57,000, that's already in play. But... What you might not notice is that Bitcoin is not out of the woods yet because there's this downtrending level of resistance with a local high, in fact, the all-time high back on tax day, April 15th, and then there's a local high again here on the 5th of September. And then just today, we are sitting right below this resistance. Not only do we have this long-term downtrending level of resistance above us on Bitcoin, we also, of course, have the flat level of resistance, the psychological barrier of $50,000 to contend with. If we come in here and go ahead and set the coordinates to $50,000 exactly, you can see exactly that. There is convergence of resistance sitting right here at $50,000 with our downtrend and 50 k So... 
I am very bullish on Bitcoin. I want to get that out there right up front. I think that Bitcoin is going to break to the upside, and I think that we're going to have a lot of bullish momentum. I am not in any way, shape, or form saying that I think Bitcoin is going to reject from 50K right now. We're going to get into those potentials in our second segment, which will start at 10.05, five minutes after the top of the hour. But right now, I am simply giving you the things that Bitcoin needs to break through. Here's the deal, though. I think it is going to. One of the things to show you is the fact that Lux, that, uh, excuse me, not Lux Algo, the Mac. MACD is still very, very bullish. We had a bullish cross on MACD five days ago, and we are still diverging bullish with these green divergent candlesticks and uh, green divergent bars here on the MACD histogram. It's a very good sign. Another thing to point out, guys, is that when I say that fifty to fifty-three thousand dollars is the gate and keep to all-time high, here's why. I have drawn this flat level of resistance at $50,000, and now I just drew a flat level of resistance at $53,000. That's our previous local high that we set on the day that Bitcoin was formally adopted in El Salvador, which we have more adoption stories coming up in a second. We have a ton of different stories to jump into here, guys. We got a lot of content, so stay tuned. But this zone between $50,000 and $53,000 is so incredibly important right now because if we look at our VPVR, you will see that there is not a whole lot of resistance at all above 53. Now, yes, we have a small little hump right here, but quite frankly, if we get above $53,000, We've kind of broken everything, and Bitcoin will be heading right back to all-time high. This is why this inverse head and shoulders pattern and this analysis that we're talking about is so incredibly important. Because if Bitcoin starts breaking above 50, gets up to 53, it's over. Game over. Why are we seeing this rally? Because the technicals and the institutions want this rally to happen. But if you look at the volume, what you're going to notice is that we've rallied over the last couple of days, and the volume's actually declining. We have very low volume, and we're rallying $10,000 on Bitcoin like it's nothing. What does that mean? It means that the retail has not jumped back into the space yet. It means that, yes, Bitcoin is rallying, but the momentum has not picked up yet because you and me and the rest of the retail has not gotten back on board. You see, Bitcoin only needs to get to above 53000 and then all the technicals say, hey, boom, we're going back to all-time high. And the retail has not even gotten here yet. The hype is not back. It hasn't even started. The FOMO right now is a 1 on a scale of 1 to 10. It isn't here. There's a lot of people that are uh, nascently involved in the cryptocurrency space. They're very new to the cryptocurrency space. And there are some people that are like, oh, yeah, I'm watching crypto. I have a Robinhood account. Or, yeah, yeah, I have a Coinbase account. But they're not really paying attention to the market right now because nothing's happening. We start breaking $53,000, you know what happens? Every single headline around the world says, Bitcoin broke local high, heading back to all-time high, because that's going to get a lot of clicks. We see a massive influx of people coming back into the space, and after we break $53,000, boom sauce, we rock it right back to all-time high. And that leads me to these two super indicators that I'm talking about. Because both of them are telling us that we are about to see exactly that happen. The first of them is what it, this show is brought to you by, which is Lux Algo. Now, I will tell you right up front because I think it's worth every single penny. Lux Algo is a paid indicator. Look, guys, you got to spend money to make money sometimes. This indicator is worth every single penny, and here's exactly why. It helps you figure out when an uptrend or when a downtrend is forming. You can see we saw a strong sell signal right here on Lux Algo that called this downtrend. We also had a strong buy signal that called this uptrend. In fact, we also saw a strong sell signal right now, uh, right here a couple of weeks ago, that said we were moving to the downside and yesterday I told you guys that we are looking for a strong sell signal a strong buy signal excuse me on Lux Algo and if it comes in that it's going to be a huge huge deal well guess what yesterday's candlestick closed relatively high we had a very green candlestick and we now have a strong buy signal on Bitcoin the last time that happened remember historical analysis is how we prove indicators worth within 42 days of the strong buy signal Bitcoin rallied 50 percent we've just seen that strong buy signal again you look back on history and generally you are going to find this signal giving you a lot of great advice for example right here strong buy signal 62 percent to the upside strong buy signal right here boom we rallied how far about 13 percent more to the upside right here rally to the upside it's a great indicator you should definitely get it but even if you're not interested in it it still is very important to our analysis and that's actually why i'm talking about it here because whenever a strong buy signal on lux algo comes in i pay attention to it this indicator has proven itself to me time and time again and right now it is strong the other indicator that i want to talk about actually shows up over on kelly kellum's twitter let me go ahead and grab his Twitter right quick because Kelly, who is, if you don't know, Kelly is somebody who's been working with us over the last little while. He's been in cryptocurrency since 2016. He has had, he, Kelly just has the 
absolute craziest story. I need to bring him on and actually interview him at some point. He's been around the world. He's crashed motorcycles. He's worked in radio. He's worked in online education. And he's been working in the cryptocurrency space since 2016. He's got a really awesome story, and he knows a lot about cryptocurrency. And he's actually introduced me to an indicator that CryptoFace, who I met on Around the Blockchain, created called Market Cipher. And he's been talking about what Market Cipher is saying. In fact, he has a tweet right here. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on this. Drop a one in chat if you'd like to see more about this indicator, but it does have something interesting to say, and it's the second of the two super indicators I'm talking about here. Kelly says this, Bitcoin and Ethereum both have super healthy pumps above $50,000 and $3,400 respectively. Four-hour charts on both show great info with market cipher of healthy money flow, VWAP, indicating no real downside pressure. ETH looks a bit more upside pressure than Bitcoin currently, hashtag bullish. Make sure to go and follow Kelly on Twitter. He told me when he hits 2,000 followers, he's going to start doing AMAs, he's going to start doing Twitter spaces. He's going to start releasing his own strategies that he uses for trading. Make sure to go and follow him at Kelly Kellum. Kelly, I know you're watching. Make sure to put your Twitter in the chat for all to see. But I want to show you what he's talking about really quickly because he's talking about this indicator down here. It's called Market Cipher B. And in fact, guys, you can actually find a link for Market Cipher down below. We have partnered with them. It is a great indicator and it works phenomenally in tandem with a lot of these other indicators. It's not an indicator that competes, it's an indicator that adds. It gives you more information and it's really cool. But what Market Cipher is saying right now is that we have momentum moving to the upside. You see this blue area right here? That is what's known as the momentum. That indicates that we're moving to the upside. You can also see these two lines up here, which are similar to the RSI. These are moving to the upside. This band right here that I'm tracing is what's known as the money flow and it's down a little bit but in general over the last five six seven days the money flow has been increasing what that means is that more people are entering the cryptocurrency space so I'm not going to go into all of the ways that you read market cipher right now because I haven't formally introduced it to you guys I want to do a video teaching how market cipher works drop a seven in chat if you'd like to see that but I can tell you this, that it is giving us a strong buy signal. You can even see on Market Cipher right here, there have been several of these little green dots right here. Those are generally uh, taken as bullish signals on Market Cipher. So in general, that signal seems to be very, very beneficial. So these two combined, Lux Algo and Market Cipher, both of them are saying, hey, look, boom, right now, it looks like market, the, the Bitcoin market is primed and ready for a big movement to the upside. The technicals right now are saying, we want to get through 50 to 53,000. And if we do, we're heading right back up to all time high. And the simple simple fact of the matter is, that's what it looks like is going to happen. With that said, I want to talk a little bit about some fundamentals because the technicals are great, but we need to make sure we have a holistic point of view and perspective on the market. I tell you guys all the time, what I'm trying to do here with this channel is bring you the bullish and the bearish. I'm trying to bring you the FOMO and the FUD. I'm not trying to FOMO or FUD you, but I'm trying to show you both sides of the story which is really important because people tend to only show you one side of the story, the one that fits their narrative. And I don't want to do that. I want to make sure you actually understand what's going on in the market because two of our core values that we try to live by are integrity and humility. And in keeping with those core values, I want to make sure you guys know everything that's going on so you can be the most informed possible. With that said, there are a couple of articles here that I want to make, bring to your attention. Number one, and this one's really, really interesting. Tongan member of parliament wants to make Bitcoin legal tender. Now, hold on. You may never have heard of Tonga. It is a little micro nation in, uh, in uh, uh, the Pacific Ocean. It's off the coast of Australia. It's a very, very small nation. We're not talking millions of people. We're talking a very small nation. But they are talking about potentially introducing Bitcoin as legal tender over there as well. You can see right here the reason that they want to do this. Tonga is the highest remittance dependent current, uh, country on earth. Between 38% and 41.1% of their gross domestic product, depending on which world bank figure you use, is remittances. What does that mean? It means 40% of the gross domestic product of the country is money coming from outside of the country. This is why El Salvador moved towards Bitcoin. Part of the reason is because they were paying so much money in fees to these banks that were processing these, na these international payments, like people were sending uh, money to El, El Salvador from the United States or from Britain or from Mexico or wherever, and the, and the banks for example, Western Union, which we're about to talk about, we're taking a massive chunk out of it, sometimes up to 50% of the remittance payment as the fee. It's ridiculous. It's highway robbery. So El Salvador went the direction of adopting Bitcoin so they could send international transfers between family members a lot cheaper. And Tonga looks like they want to do the same thing since 40% of their GDP is based on remittances. Here is the thing that makes my freaking blood boil. And the reason this makes my blood boil is because I stand for my financial freedom. I started this channel because I wanted financial freedom. I run this channel because I want you to have financial freedom. I want you to partner with me and come alongside me in the journey that I'm running with myself and my team for financial freedom. And I want you to reach financial freedom 
So what I'm about to read really upsets me. According to the MP, the Member of Parliament of Tonga, Western Union takes a 30% bite out of remittances sent back to the country as things stand. This is similar to the plight of El Salvador, where he says Western Union fees are closer to 50%. Likewise, El Salvador is the first country to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. And while it's not confirmed in Tonga yet, there are talks in their parliament of them potentially being another nation to adopt Bitcoin. The dominoes are starting to fall. I posted on Twitter earlier. What we're seeing right now is that there's a $200 billion value locked in uh, in uh, uh, DeFi, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. I have the article up right here. There's $200 billion locked in DeFi. The market capitalization is $2 trillion. And I just read a metric this morning that over the last 12 months, there was $6.6 $6 trillion in volume on the Ethereum blockchain alone. Think about that. If there's $6.6 $6 trillion in volume on the Ethereum blockchain alone, that means there's probably $15, $20 trillion of annual volume happening in cryptocurrency right now. This is not a fad anymore, guys. This is the future. The moon isn't 24 months from now. The moon is right now. We're on our way to Mars. We already hit the moon. Bitcoin's trading at $50,000, and we're all like, ah, I'm bored. $50,000 was a pipe dream 12 months ago, guys. I've made my point. Let's read this really quickly, and then I have some other stuff to show you on the charts. Total value locked across multiple DeFi chains nears $200 billion dollars. Ethereum's TVL, total value locked, dominance reaches 70%. I'm not going to read it through all of this. You guys can pause and read through all of this if you would like. This article is over on Bitcoin.com. But essentially what we're looking at here is that there's $195 billion total value locked in DeFi, which is decentralized finance. It's growing rapidly. It's barely two years old and already has $200 billion, more than the gross domestic product of Canada. And Ethereum has $135 billion locked in it alone. So the fundamentals right now of Ethereum and of Bitcoin and of the cryptocurrency market are spectacular. How does all this play into our narrative that I'm trying to tell you? The story that I'm trying to tell you with this stream is this. Fifty dollars to $53,000 is right above us. It is right above us. You see the exact same thing happening on Ethereum. In Ethereum, it's sitting between $3,500 and about $4,000. It's right above us. There's resistance right above us. And if we can break it, the future for this cryptocurrency market is so flipping bright that the $63,000 prediction by the end of this month that Plan B made and the $55,000 to $60,000 prediction by the end of this month that I made seem like they are absolutely positively going to happen. Here's how. And I will run you through this. Let's move down to the four hourly chart. Whether or not Bitcoin goes into an inverse head and shoulders pattern, we're almost certainly going to break $50,000 one way or the other. Whether we do it immediately in the next 12 hours or we correct first and then we break to the upside, one way or the other, the fundamentals and the technicals are overwhelmingly bullish. That's why our bearish segment today is literally going to be like five minutes. There's just not much bearish to talk about. One way or the other, we're going to break $50,000. Then in here, this territory between 50 and 53 is the hard part. Can we break that? I personally think we absolutely can. I'm going to remove market cipher here for a second. But you can see that even down here on the four hourly chart, we're crossing bullish on the MACD. And up here on the RSI, we are sitting up in relatively healthy territory. A lot of people would look at this RSI and say, oh man, we're overextended. We're sitting at 71. We need to have a correction. Not necessarily. This basically just signals that the bulls are strong. Now, one thing that I will point out to you is that there is bearish RSI divergence showing up on the four-hourly chart. And this is one of the bearish things that we'll talk about in a second. I just want to bring it up right now because it is a counterpoint. But in general, the four-hourly chart is also very bullish. We can even look at Lux Algo here and see what it has to say. Boom. We had a strong buy signal right here. This is a great indicator. Check it out. Links down below. It has called this entire rally, and it says we're still rallying. Looking at the TD sequential, we're not overextended on the four hourly. Looking at the Bollinger Bands, we're very, very, very overextended on the Bollinger Bands. We talked about how they were constricting yesterday and how that might not be a good thing, but as we saw, we broke to the upside roughly 24 hours ago, so that is a very much a good thing. We are looking very, very bullish right now. I think $53,000 is going to be breached relatively soon, and then we're going to rally back to 63. But I have one more article before we move into our first intermission, and it is this. Bank of America publishes research reports on crypto NFTs in DeFi. Now, I'm not actually interested in their report. They go over a lot of things like uh, crypto is too large to ignore. It has 200 million users. There's a lot of great things in this report. You should definitely look into it, but that's not the point of the stream. Uh, regulatory uncertainty is a near-term risk, they say, but it is something that they expect is going to be worked on and that cryptocurrency is going to have a lot more regulatory clarity in the next few years. And then Bank of America, BOA, also stated it's possible that $1.7 uh, billion excuse me, unbanked globally can gain access to financial services with their smartphones through the DeFi ecosystem. The point I want to make here is that this is the first of the major banks that's actually gone about 
the process of publishing a report where they talk about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. This is actually relatively rare. They just formed the team that did this back in July. So we see major banks in their regular reporting cycle now starting to add Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies into the cycle. What this means is that the banks are looking at Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies much more than they ever have. Why does that matter? It's because you don't look at something that you don't either think of as a threat or an opportunity. These big banks are looking at Bitcoin now when they didn't four years ago, because four years ago they didn't see crypto as a threat or an opportunity. Now they do. They see it as a threat because it threatens their 30% payments on remittances to people that can barely afford to keep food on the table, which makes me very upset. But it also opposes an opportunity because they have billions of dollars that they can put into it. So this is actually a really big deal. You might not think it, but BOA publishing research on crypto means that they either see it as a threat or an opportunity, and that's a very big deal. With that said, guys, we're going to go into our first intermission here. I want to make sure that you guys are getting everything that you need. So if there's anything you would like me to cover that I've missed, let me know in the chat. And also, guys, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. How many likes do we have right now? We, we have 786. I know we can get up over 1,500 likes. We have over 4,000 people watching already. So make sure to smash that like button. Smay, we have some super chats, right? Do you have that document up? No, I do not. Okay, well, give me just a second and I will get it. Smay, while I am grabbing that document, uh, what do you think about the, and we'll go into more of this a little bit later, but where, what, what do you think about that fifty to $53,000 zone? Do you think that it's kind of, you know, we're, we're off to the races after that's breached? Um, yeah, honestly, so the way I'm thinking about this is that I, I, I definitely think we're going to be pretty bullish, and I actually think we're going to be more bullish than typically I would say we're going to be. But I still, there's just a part of me that just doesn't see retail getting excited just yet. Uh, and the reason why I say that is just there's a lot of a lot of uncertainty right now in kind of just casual spaces. And and I feel like, and I, and I may not be understanding this correctly, right? But I, I feel like there's just not enough power in just crypto enthusiasts to push Bitcoin up to where we want it to be up, you know, way up mooning, you know? I, I really think it's one of those things that we, like casuals need to kind of get behind it as well. And... And I just feel like there's just a lot of uncertainty and not a lot of understanding around Bitcoin just yet that's going to launch us to very crazy price heights. But Yeah, no, absolutely. I think you're right. We need more education in this space. That's yeah. why we try and bring you guys educational content every single day so that you guys can understand how this cryptocurrency market works. I do want to read a couple of Super Chats here, though. Uh, let's see. We got Tyler McNett donated 10 bucks earlier. He said, Ethereum and Bitcoin on Coinbase yearly chart. Is it a cup and handle? Thanks for all you do. Yeah, actually, let's look at that really quickly because that is something I saw on Twitter earlier. What he's talking about is this. Jump onto my screen and I'll show you. He's talking about something that was published on Twitter. I, I'm Forgive me, I'm blanking on who published this. But they basically said that what we're seeing right now is a gigantic cup and handle formation starting all the way back on uh, around December of 2017. We saw this big old cup followed by this handle that's forming over the last six months. I got to be honest with you, I don't agree that this is a cup and handle formation. You can make the argument maybe that it's a cup and handle, but the problem is... Cup and handles normally have the cup and the handle, uh, the 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 rim of the cup at a relatively similar level. But frankly, if you take this off log chart, this does not look like a cup and handle. This just looks like the market moon for six months back yeah. earlier last year, which it did. This is something that's uh, working around the cryptocurrency space quite a bit right now. I just don't think it is. You know, if it, look, here's the thing though: technical analysis is about what people see. So if a lot of people are reading that market as a cup and handle formation and then they expect it to rally then yeah that cup and handle formation technically if people read it that way would have a price target of one hundred and twenty thousand dollars which don't get me wrong i would love but it's it doesn't yeah. really meet all the criteria for a proper cup and handle but i can see where people are coming from with that and hopefully it does drive some fomo uh, I, yeah yeah i was gonna say to edit what i said because i didn't really give a price Target. I do think we're probably going to touch close to sixty thousand by the end of October. That's what I, I I meant when I met was talking about bullishness. I just think I I really am talking about just big you know eighty plus looking at that within the next two months. I just don't see it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I want to I want you to dive into that more here in our concluding segments, man. I got some really good questions for you on yeah. that. But guys, just so you know what the show map looks like here in about five ten minutes, we're going to jump back into our technical analysis. We're going to look at the bearish technicals because, like I said, I want to bring you both sides of the argument. There are reasons that we might say that hey, Bitcoin's not going to break fifty three thousand. It is my responsibility as an influencer who you guys listen to to bring you both sides. So we're going to talk about that here in five or ten minutes. But we got a lot of super chats that are relevant to what we're saying right here that I want to continue to talk about. Pete L donated ten bucks. Said. What quarter next year do you think Ethereum will pull back? Well, 
Ethereum is likely going to have a pullback at some point after Bitcoin has a pullback. Why do I say that? During the 2017 bull market, Bitcoin hit all-time high on December 16th, uh, 2017, and Ethereum hit all-time high, I want to say around January 15th, 16th, 17th, something like that, 2018. You guys can check me on that if you would like. It happened a month later. What occurred at the end of 2017 was that Bitcoin was driving the market. Bitcoin was gobbling up all the market dominance. You can go back and look at the market dominance chart. Market, do market dominance was rallying very quickly as it was uh, leading the market, and then an altcoin cycle was about a month behind. What we're seeing right now is very similar to that and reminds me a lot of that time. I was in the space in 2017. I watched Bitcoin hit 20K live when it happened four years ago. What we saw is that a lot of the hype from the altcoin space fled the altcoin space to Bitcoin because Bitcoin was on this massive run. Well, right now what we're seeing, and this is something that's not in our show lineup, but it's some research I was doing this morning, a lot of the uh, the institutions are taking some of their investments and pulling it away from the lower cap altcoins and putting it into Bitcoin, which under certain circumstances you might think is a bearish thing. In this case, I think it's actually a very bullish thing. And we're seeing some of those you know transfers in the direction of what we've seen in past when we see a major bull run. So I think that we might be seeing something like that happening. As far as your question, uh, when do I think Ethereum will pull back? It'll happen after the bull market is over. The thing is, I don't think we're going to go into a traditional 6-month, 12-month, 18-month bear market. I think we're going to go into a shorter bear market next. And the reason for that is because we have so much more institutional adoption and fundamental support in this market now than we have ever seen before. I think we're going to see that happen probably around quarter one to quarter two of next year. And I think it's going to be very short. And by the end of 2022, I think we'll be back into a bull market. Uh, crypto... Alchemist also said, saw a video from Gareth, who was on ATB, said 53,000 could be the second bounce that predicates the bear market that looks similar to 2017's uh, chart. Thoughts? Yes, that is possible. And this is something that people have been talking about. We can jump on my screen really quickly here, and I will show you what they're talking about. $53,000 is very important, and I'm going to talk about this more in the bearish segment, so stay tuned for that. $53,000 is also very important because if we don't break above that, and if we do have a major rejection to the downside, then that is actually a very big point in favor of the bears. Like I said, we'll talk more about that here in just a second, but I want to go ahead and read that super chat. Thank you very much. I'm also going to jump back over to my super chat document here and read a couple more of them. Uh, we got Kelly. Kelly Kellum, shout out to Kelly, donated, said, Market Cypher is great at seeing state of market, and Market Cypher helps you forecast the moves. With Lux Algo, you get double trade signal confirmation. So, yeah, what he's talking about is that Market Cypher and Lux Algo work really, really, really well in tandem. They don't, I mean, they overlap a little bit, but it's not like you got to pick one or the other. They actually work really, really well together. And like I said, I've been using Lux Algo for four or five months. I've started using Market Cypher on the side, you know, kind of getting used to it. And they work really well together. They are, there's a lot of harmony between those two indicators. They work really, really solid together. Also want to give a call out to a couple of other people so we can jump back into it. Uh, Michael Dottimo donated, uh, Joffrey Fritz donated, Toby Wood donated, uh, Jacqueline Clark do uh, donated, and a little Luna Thank you guys very, very much. If we have a little bit of time here at the end of the show, then I'll be able to dive into your questions. But for right now, we have to jump back into it. Kelly also talked about something very important. I'm going to jump onto his Twitter because he has this on his Twitter over here. Take a look at this. Kelly just super chat again, told us about this. He says, huddle your alt, don't jump between moving trains. Pause. What does that mean? Right now and during the cryptocurrency bull market, people love this habit of saying, oh my gosh, this thing's about to move. Oh, that's boring. Oh my gosh, this thing, it's about to move. It's about to go up. Oh, that's boring. Oh, what about this? And people don't have consistency. If you try and catch two rabbits, you're not going to catch either one. The grass isn't greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it, my friend. Too many people do that. Don't yeah. try and jump between moving trains so much. So what yeah. he's saying, he says this. In this chart, you can see he's showing the total market capitalization excluding Bitcoin. So this is the altcoin market. Now, this is a good example of a cup and handle formation. This is exactly what a cup and handle formation is. You can see on this chart, it's actually a retweet by uh, BitParabolic. You can follow him on Twitter also, but Kelly pointed it out to me. The altcoin market dominance, uh, market capitalization right now is forming a giant cup and handle formation. And technically speaking, if you were to extrapolate this, then you would see a price target of about $2.2 trillion in altcoin market cap, which would lead cryptocurrency to a market cap of like $5 trillion, which would then lead Bitcoin to $150,000. So yeah. not going to go into too much detail on that, but it is really cool. And I wanted you guys to see that. With that, that said, yeah, what well, are you I was going to say, like, that's exactly... That's exactly why recently I was telling uh, Jeb and uh, I don't actually I don't know if I was talking to you Jeb I was talking to Tim and I was telling him about how I kind of moved out of my uh, a lot of my altcoins. Yeah, you were right talking now. about that this morning. Yeah, I, I was like I kind of moved out a lot of my altcoins just because 
I, I'm at, I'm not in the space where I want to try to catch moon like pumps or anything like that. I was just kind of like, I just want to start dollar cost averaging and, and feeling good about just putting some away here and there and just kind of leaving it. So that's why I'm going to be uh, moving a lot of more of my investing into Bitcoin for now. But that's actually one of the big reasons why is because I, I just, I don't like the idea of just trying to wait for the next pump and, and so on. So, yep. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Looks may I love, I love the advice that, um, that George gave on the show yesterday. Jo by the way, shout out to George, Cryptos R Us. That was a phenomenal interview. You guys got to go back and watch yesterday's episode of Coffee and Crypto. I had a great time talking to him. He gave the 50-25-25 advice, and that is 50% of your portfolio in Bitcoin, 25% of your portfolio in large caps, and 25% of your portfolio in small caps. A good example of a small cap that goes under the radar is BAT, Basic Attention Token. It's one that I was talking to my chief marketing officer, Shannon, earlier about today. It's a great project, one with a lot of backing. It works with a Brave browser. There's been a lot of adoption going on. It flies under the radar, but it's a good project. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of small cap altcoins that you can make a lot of gains on, but in general, you want to make sure that you're sticking with the big caps because the problem that, and after this, we're going to jump back into our technicals. The mistake that a lot of people make in this space, they join the space and they try and do the most complicated, hardest thing first because there's a lot of money in it. Frankly, I have watched people make 5 million bucks in 10 minutes because they did 100x long in the market, long squeeze 25% to the upside, or short squeeze 25% to the upside. I've watched that happen. Yeah. You got to be careful, though, because a lot of people try and do these super, super, super advanced tactics and they haven't started. It's like saying, oh, I'm going to walk into the boxing gym and I'm going to I want to fight Bruce Lee. Well, how many times how long have you been boxing? You got 10 years experience, 20 years. No, I just started last week. Yeah, I want to I want to I want to fight Bruce Lee. Oh, no, I want to I want to go toe to toe with Chuck Norris. Bro, you have not earned the right to even make that assessment. You got to build yourself. You got to <laughs> grow. You got to have some experience. So I encourage you, if you're new to the cryptocurrency space, don't get cocky. Because he's going to whoop you. Leverage trading is going to whoop you. All these little altcoins are going to whoop you. What I do encourage you is continue investing in your education, grow, and work on the things that are simple, easy, but do have returns, like dollar cost averaging when you're new to yes. this space. As you grow, sure, go up and fight those guys. Do it. You know, Take those risks, but don't take a bunch of risks when you're new. Take a bunch of risks after you've been here for a while and you really know what you're doing. I was going to say, George is great. I love George. Yeah, George was great. Guys, definitely go subscribe to his channel. With that said, guys, I do want to remind you, this show is brought to you by Lux Algo. They are one of the sponsors of this channel. And the only reason that they're one of the sponsors of this channel is because they're a product that we believe in, that we use. And I'm about to show you some other things that Lux Algo is telling you here in just a second. It is a product that I endorse because I personally use it literally every single day because it's an indicator that's in my tool belt and has personally helped me in my trading and in my investing. It is a great product. The link's down below. With that said, let's go ahead and jump back onto my chart because there are some bearish technicals that I want to bring to you. Again, I'm not very bearish on Bitcoin, but it is my duty to bring you both sides of the argument so that you are fully informed. Let's start here on a clean chart. Remember, there is a downtrending level of resistance on the log chart for Bitcoin that we have to contend with. This is very important because if we don't manage to get above this, then we are going to be in bad shape. Why? Because we would have set a lower high. We would have set a lower high. If we set a lower high right here, that does not instill a lot of confidence. Because remember what we said earlier. Remember what we said earlier. We right now do not have a lot of in, uh, of interest from the general retail space. Like, for example, uh, a, a, team, a team member of ours on our staff was talking about how they're investing and they're, and they're starting to get into it. But, you know, they're, they're getting back into it. You know, they've done investment in crypto, but they want to start getting back into it uh, some more. And... It reminded me that a lot of people in the cryptocurrency space only join and only are interested in the space when everything's exciting, when everything's blowing up, when everything's moonshotting. Otherwise, they sit on the sidelines. It's you guys that are here right now that are the people that are really going to make the most out of this space. It's you, you who's watching this right now. You are the one that is going to make the most out of this space because you're willing to stay here in the space when it gets a little boring. Last couple of weeks have been kind of boring. The last five days have not. The last five days have been super exciting. But before that, two weeks, it's pretty boring. The people that stay here are the ones that are going to make a lot of money. But the fact of the matter is 90% of people don't. 90% of people are only here when things are moonshotting. That retail that is very fickle like that has not come back yet. And if we don't manage to get above 50000 to 53000 they're not going to. They're going to keep sitting on the sidelines and saying, ah, I'll come back when it's interesting. So if we don't get above our convergent resistance on this downtrend and at $50,000, we're going to be in trouble because we need to have that retail come back in. What Smay said earlier, I completely agree with, and we're going to talk about this more in a second. We don't have the interest and the institutional interest in the space right now to drive us to $100,000 or $65,000 by the end of the month. we got to pick up some fuel on the way. 
We don't have enough gas in the tank to drive all the way to Washington, D.C. We got to stop in South Carolina so that we can get some gas. We got to stop at $55,000 so we can get some investment. We don't have everything it takes right now to get to 63000 by the end of the month. I think we're going to, but we got to get above that resistance. Another thing to keep in mind, guys, the volume is pretty low right now. In fact, the volume is very low right now. We have seen more volume on these red candlesticks back over here on September 20th, September 21st, September 24th, September 7th. You can see all of these examples right here. These were larger red volume candlesticks than anything we've seen recently. You can look at this on every single exchange. These are three different exchanges. We're looking here at Coinbase, here at Bitstamp, here at Bitfinex. The volume is categorically low across the board. That signals to me that, yes, we can move to the upside because the order books are thin. But the problem is, that means there's not a lot of confidence behind this move. We want to see a break to the upside, and we want to see more confidence in the form of more volume. On top of that, moving down to the four-hourly chart, there is a bearish set of RSI divergence right here. Look at this RSI divergence, guys. This is pretty powerful. Why? Because RSI divergence almost always gets vindicated. It's rare that RSI divergence doesn't get vindicated. Yes, there are bullish factors at play, but this RSI divergence is actually very strong and does predict that we need to have a small correction to the downside. You see how easy it is? And this is a side note, but it's important. You see how easy it is for someone to paint a picture of bullishness or bearishness? You know, if you just tuned in in the last three minutes, you might think, oh, Jeff's super bearish. He thinks we're never going to break $50,000. He thinks we're going to crash. You see how easy it is when you only present one side of the story to paint the story and the narrative however you want? If you see how easy that is, then you see why it's so important that you look at both sides of the story. And you see why we show you both sides of the story. Because if I just show you the bullish technicals and I don't show you the bearish, well, you're going to walk away saying, oh, well, duh, we're going to moonshot. You saw, all those inform you saw all that information Jeff threw at me. And if you only watch the bearish, then you're going to walk away and say, well, look at this. We're obviously going to go down because look at all this information that Jeb just gave me. i got like four pages of notes on my iPad over here. I have tons of bullish and bearish technicals. It is our job as the analyst and especially my job as the influencer that you're watching to help you understand how all of those factors line up. So yes, there are bearish technicals. I am overwhelmingly bullish on the market right now. I don't want to get it twisted. I am definitely bullish on the market right now, but it is my job to show you both of these examples. Another thing to show you here on the four hourly chart is the simple fact that there is flat resistance on top of $50,000 that we were looking at a second ago. So I'll go ahead and draw this at $50,000. We have our downtrending level of resistance right here. And then we also have a flat level of resistance as constituted by the high that we set over here at 400 hours in the morning on my birthday, August the 23rd. That was $50,500. That is extra resistance on top of what we're already looking at. So we actually have convergence of resistance between three things. If you guys don't know what convergence of resistance is, I have a video in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy on it over here. It is right here. The convergence of support and resistance is an eight minute, 54 second video. I talk about how important it is to pay attention to resistance when it's overlapping. Think about it like this. Let's say uh, you're in a battle. You're in a, like a Roman war. You have 10,000 men. The enemy has 20,000 men. Well, what happens if they have 30,000 men? Well, obviously they're stronger, right? Well, think about each line of each one of these resistance levels is like 10,000 men. You add extra men to the army and then duh, the army is stronger, right? That's kind of what we're seeing right here. There is an extra legion of, of men, of 5,200 men sitting here in the Roman army, if you will. And that is what we're seeing with convergence of resistance. We have more forces here that are making it hard. So we have these three levels of resistance overlapping each other and bearish RSI divergence. What does that say? It says for us to break above 50,500, let alone getting up here to 53,000 where we need to get to, is going to be difficult. But... We're probably going to find out if we're able to do it today at the latest tomorrow. Again, we have a contingency here. If we break to the downside and we do move to the downside, we can go all the way as low as 44000 and still bounce, put an inverse head and shoulders pattern in place. That gives us a $57,000 price target. We're great. But I want you to keep in mind th four things. Downtrending level of resistance, psychological resistance at 50000 You might think, oh, we're at 50166 We've broken it. Nope. Every level is a zone. We are still contending with $50,000 as resistance. We are not out of the woods yet. We also have our local resistance at $50,500 and the downtrending level of resistance on RSI combined with the uptrending level of resistance on the, um, on the four hourly chart. All of that indicates that we have strong resistance above us. And if we don't get above it, we're going to have trouble. Again, I want to make sure I'm clear because a lot of people somehow think that I am super bearish on Bitcoin. I'm not. 
I'm telling you that there is potential we could go to 44, 45. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen anymore after the break we've seen to the upside as of last night, but that is a possibility. With that said, we're going to go into intermission, and then five minutes from now, we're going to jump back into our concluding segments. We're going to have some discussion. I want to ask Smay a couple questions, get his take on the market, and then I'll give you my take on the market. We're going to wrap everything up into a nice, neat bow here. But guys, if you're enjoying today's stream, I encourage you and I implore you, please, Hit that like button. It helps out the channel greatly. We've got 1.5K likes right now. I know we can get to 2,000. And the reason that I say that is because the amount of likes on the video helps the, the video and the stream get promoted in the algorithm. And basically what that means is that more people get eyes on this content. So if you believe that what we're providing here is valuable and other people will benefit from seeing it, then hitting that like button is the best way to uh, help promote our content so that we're able to move uh, more quickly here into the future. Did you fix this, May? I'm sorry. I messed you up. Yeah, you're good. You're We're good. all good? Yep. Cool. So, guys, go ahead and hit that like button. Also, subscribe. We're working on hitting 200,000 subscribers by the end of Woo! the month. If we hit 200,000 subscribers by the end of the month, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to think about it. I'll, we I'll do, something. do a dance. Smay will do a dance. Yeah. Boom, you'll get a Smay dance. Smay, really quickly here, we got a few minutes before we got to jump into our next segment. What is the status of our merch? Because I'm looking forward to that Smay on a ladder shirt. Yes, so we're, it's still in getting worked on. That's still all getting I can worked say. on? That's all I can say. That's all you can say? Okay. Well, there you go, guys. Be looking forward to it because we got some cool stuff coming on up. Guys, we're having a great show today. I'm really, really enjoying it. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also, guys, like I said, this show is brought to you by Lux Algo. I've said it a couple times. I'm just reminding you, if you're interested in checking it out, you've seen how useful it is, you can find a link down below. There is a 20% off coupon code down there as well. Really quickly, I'm going to jump into our Super Chat document. I'm going to read some more Super Chats. We uh, have... Well, uh, I was gonna say, can, that? I, can I do a shout out real quick? Yeah, do it. I want to give a shout out. I want to give two shout outs. Just because I feel like loving on people today. I want to give a shout out, first and foremost, to Zach Bradley for making those beautiful artworks. Yeah, thank you, Zach Bradley. Uh, thank you so much for being such a great person. Actually, I'm going to do three shout outs. I want to give another shout out to Kelly Kellum. Thank you so much thank for you, being Kelly. so Guys, awesome. Guys, go follow Kelly on Twitter. He's awesome. I want him to be at 20,000 followers by the end of the year. Yep. And then I also want to give one last shout out to Greg Gresick. Let's go, Because Greg. I just love him so much. I love him so much. And I want you guys to know how much he works hard for us. And how much he love how much he loves you guys, and I love him a lot. So I just wanted to do that real quick. Yeah, Greg is on our staff, and Kelly helps out a lot with our research. So definitely shout out to both of them. Shout out to them. Got an interesting super chat here from crowd favorite Matt C. Shout out to Matt C. We've met him twice now on the webinar, and he's always supporting us. I joke that Matt C's super chats help to pay uh, or do pay all of Smay's. Um, payroll. I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't looked at the number, but Smay does, I mean, not Smay, Massey donates a lot, so it'd be really funny. Uh, anyway, Massey donated $10. He said, if Brazil passes Bitcoin as legal tender, then I believe it's game on. I think so too. We will see countries FOMO into, uh, we'll see countries FOMO in to keep up and it could come rapidly. Bitcoin supply shock would be insane. Massey, I could not agree more. I actually have a metric I want to show you guys here in a second about a supply shock on cryptocurrency, but Smay, what do you think about that? If Brazil, a nation of, I want to say like 160, 170, 180 million people, massive gross domestic product, largest nation in South America, second, uh, third largest in the continental Americas by land area, what would happen if they actually adopted Bitcoin's legal tender like what we're seeing in El Salvador? Um, I mean, I think it'll be bigger than the last two countries that we've seen adopt Bitcoin. Uh, especially two. What's as, the other one? Uh, well, I was going to say, especially if it, if Tonga does it. Oh, well, if Tonga But does, I was yeah. going to say, I, I just, there's something about these countries adopting Bitcoin where I'm like, I don't know how much at this point, as Bitcoin gets bigger, it's going to do for Bitcoin as much as I think it's actually going to, uh, if anything, will make the case for people to trust Bitcoin more. But I actually think that it's just helping these countries more, you yeah. know, and that's what I think, especially with Tonga. Like, is Tonga adopting Bitcoin going to do anything for Bitcoin? Mm, probably not. Probably but not. Yeah. You know what it's going to do for Tonga? It's going to do a lot for Tonga. And and as a community, we need to be just as excited. Yeah. Because it's not it's the, at the end of the day, it's not just about filling our own bags. Mm -hmm. It's about making sure that people in the world are taken care of. And that's one of the best reasons to support Bitcoin, Bitcoin is the change it can make in the world. Oh, so, nice. man, I, I was going to say, I'm, ex I'm just as excited as if it was, you know, a, 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 the entirety of Europe yeah. adopting Bitcoin. The European Union. No, I'm happy. I'm yeah. happy for Tonga. So Yeah, absolutely, guys. Well, really quickly, we're going to jump into our concluding segment, but I want to actually bring up a tweet that Kelly tweeted. This is really cool, guys. This is the kind of Bitcoin supply shock pressure that really supports great upwards movement in price. He's retweeting something from Jan and Yan. 
Bitcoin long-term hodlers holders have added 2.35 million Bitcoin to their stacks since their supply bottomed out in March. In that same period, only $180,000, uh, 180,000 Bitcoin were minted. This means long-term holders have hodled 13x more coins than were produced via fresh issuance over the last seven months. What does that look like? Here's what it looks like. Since all-time high, there has been a supply increase with long-term holders of 2.35 million. Keep in mind, that's over 10% of the entire cryptocurrency market cap uh, uh, circulating supply is being held in long-term supply. This means that well over half, approaching two-thirds, in fact, I think it's over two-thirds. Yeah, it'd be over two-thirds of uh, Bitcoin is being held in long-term wallets. What's the point of that? Well, first of all, it is an all-time high by a long stretch. We're talking an all-time high by several hundred thousand Bitcoin. But also, it means that we are having... Uh, we're having a major movement to the upside in a big way in long-term price appreciation because these people are holding Bitcoin. You know, George talked about this on the show yesterday. He believes that it's going to be unlikely that Bitcoin's going to be adopted as a global national currency Ooh. for many nations. I think that we are going to see that happen, but I do think that the vast majority of Bitcoin's value over the next 10 years is not going to come from daily usage in nations like El Salvador, Tonga, maybe Brazil in the future, maybe Ukraine in the future. Yeah. We've seen all these nations talk about it, but instead it is going to come from people holding it like gold. Bitcoin is the future. It is digital gold. So this yeah. metric right here is actually huge. And to my knowledge, we have never seen the long-term supply, long-term holder supply increase this rapidly at any point in the history of Bitcoin, except for maybe the first couple of years when things were first getting minted. This is a very, very big deal. And it indicates that the future of Bitcoin is confirmed by the fact that people are holding on to it for long-term store value, which is what it was created to do in the first place. You know, I, it was, I was going to say, I had a lot of, I had all night to chew on what, uh, what George said the other day. And it really does. I really, I think he's really correct in terms of that. He, I think he has a very good understanding of where things are at. You know, I don't think this generation who is currently in power is going to at any point adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender. But the next generation, that's where I think I, that's where I think I, I didn't agree with him where it stopped is that he said, never, I don't agree with never. I think as soon as, the Gen Z starts getting old enough to start taking those that power. Yeah, I mean, at that point, we're going to be so familiar with cryptocurrency. It's going to be, a, it's going to, it's an inevitable. It's an, it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's like, yeah, no, I absolutely agree that CBDCs are and all this stuff is going to be the more popular thing yeah. at, at this current at this current pace. But to think that Gen Zers are going to think the exact same way, uh, you know. Uh, Gen X or uh, baby boomers think when they're in power? No, I don't think so. No, I, I agree with you, Smay. I absolutely do. Uh, we just had a comment. Michael P said, get Peter Schiff on the show. I don't know. Maybe he's someone that we could have on the show. Tweet him and Isn't see he if like he would like Isn't he like a huge Bitcoin here? No, I don't know. I haven't actually watched, looked too much into Peter Schiff. I'm sure he's like the gold guy. Is I think Peter Schiff, I'm pretty sure Peter Schiff changed his tune and actually likes gold, uh, Bitcoin. He used to not, I don't think he used to like it, but if you guys tweet at him, you know. Maybe do something. We'll see. Uh, but we also have another super chat I want to read here really quickly. Uh, actually, I just want to give a shout out real quick to Ivo Santos. Thank you very much for your super chat. And also DD said, I've been watching you since your face reveal, since before your face reveal. Great content as always. Keep up the good work. Thank you guys very much. And I actually have an update. The, pro the population of Brazil is over 210 million. So I was actually lowballing that a little bit. But Smay, I got a question for you here that'll tie into everything that we are talking about. And it'll yes. help us bring all of our content today up into a nice, neat bow. Mm -hmm. Are we getting ahead of ourselves? Because you have been very wise with the whole turtle market analogy. It's funny. Look, hashtag turtle market, guys. Drop it in chat. But the thing is, you've actually been right on a lot of your predictions just by doubling the time frame that it takes. Do yeah. you think we're getting ahead of ourselves with a $60,000 Bitcoin in the next three and a half weeks? And is it time that we should start actually following your advice and extending our time horizons? <laughs> guys, it's always been time for you to follow my advice. <laughs> but I will say, honestly, I, 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 I'm not sure. Right. Bitcoin can always surprise people. Right. And I don't want to take this. I don't want to take away the power that Bitcoin has to surprise uh, to surprise me, you know, but I, I got to be honest with you. I, I just looking at the the outlook of where the world's at right now, not not how, you know, Bitcoin's adoption is going, because that's one that way of looking at it. Right. Of the, that kind of side of the fundamentals. But I actually just want to look at it from a what's the world look like? And if you look at like places like Australia, what Australia is going through right now, 
And you look at, you know, you look at the way the United States is politically, and you look at the way Europe is politically right now, and the way China is politically right now, and the fact that they just banned Bitcoin. Again. I just, exactly, again. I just, I, I don't know if there's enough beyond just the enthusiast that people are willing, wanting to invest at all right now, right? If you're uncertain, right, you're uncertain whether or not you're going to be able to go to work, you know, if you're uncertain about these these things of like wh- where your whole country's at politically, you're not, you know. And I think is if you were if people understood it better, understood Bitcoin better, then oh yeah, my currency's a mess. I would I'm immediately gonna try to throw my money into Bitcoin, right? But the th- but the thing is, May, and I want to hear your thoughts on this. During 2020, which was I think you would agree one of the most tumultuous yeah. years in the entire yeah. century so far, we watched Bitcoin. Move from four thousand to forty thousand. Absolutely no. Absolute, During all that absolute, political instability, because and, and, that's something that a lot of people have talked about. Like, hey, we're seeing deflation in the dollar. We're seeing, um, we're seeing people that uh, are worried about whether or not they're going to get a paycheck, and that the market's not going to rally. Well, what happened during twenty twenty? Yeah, we I, broke all time high. I, I love that you brought that up because I think we're in this kind of fantasy land. If you think that we're better off than we were in twenty twenty, we're worse hmm. off than we were in twenty twenty now politically. Fair. And that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to get at. Is like it's not been trending up. We've been trending down, and that's why I'm. I put, I personally believe. I still think though, right? Because as people come to their senses, as people start to trust Bitcoin more, it's still gonna have that 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 rally that we've all discussed, right? Yeah. I am absolutely. I think it's inevitable that we're gonna see hundred thousand in the next like six months, right? But what I'm saying is, I just don't. I just don't see it going as fast as everyone's saying, right? I think there's that's a little bit of wishful thinking. I think we're not going to hit 100,000 by the end of December. We're probably going to hit it closer to uh, somewhere around March is where my where my target is. And I and I think I think in October and regarding October, I think we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna hit six, uh, 60,000. I think that's fair. But I, I and again, I'm backing that with saying Bitcoin is always. Uh, has the ability to surprise us. So, so, so you think that we are going to hit sixty thousand dollars by the end of October, but you don't think we're going to hit a hundred no, by the end of the year? No. So you don't think? So let me get this straight. You don't think that we're going to see a massive amount of excitement coming to the space, and the FOMO is going to get so insane that after we break all time high, that we're going to run to a hundred thousand dollars? I just don't. don't I just don't think there's going to be enough energy behind it. I don't see. I it. disagree. I, I, I just don't see a hundred thousand by the end of the year. It's that's a huge. That's a huge milestone. Like that's a gigantic. And I think people, because they've seen these jumps before, they you saw a twenty thousand to forty to fifty. You know, to, well twenty thousand really to sixty something thousand. Yep. You know, that I just it's not as easy. I just think the FOMO is going to come in thick and fast, and we're gonna see a giant rally so quickly. Like, can we get a poll? By the way, I know Shannon or T- Taylor, one of you guys are watching. Can we get a poll in chat? Do you think that we're going to one hundred thousand dollars by the end of the year or not? I want to hear what you guys think. It, because I know this is a very this is a this is probably one of the most complicated, um, not one of the most complicated, one of the most commonly discussed topics in cryptocurrency. Drop a plus one in chat for Smay or a plus one in chat for well, um, Jeb. Also, what do you guys? I was think? gonna say I I think you're 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 onto something about the FOMO, right? But the reason why I don't think it's gonna be as powerful as we've seen it before is I think people have less money than they did before. Like I don't I don't think people are in a good place financially right now on on average. But a lot that, of the money is that's going to be coming in isn't just people. It's going to be also or, the yes, it's going to be the institutions. Yeah, absolutely. I I got I don't know. I I I really I think it's going to take a little bit longer. I think we're going to see it sometime around March. And look, that's that that again, I'm I'm giving Bitcoin room to surprise me. I hope I'm not, it surprises you. If, if here's here's where I'm at. I'm not saying this is a 100% prediction. This is more of like a mm, 65% you know, this is like a 65%. I just have a feeling that we're not going to. I got it. a feeling. Boom. Well, there you go, guys. That is Smay's take. I got to disagree with him, but I, it looks like a lot of people are. Looks like the looks like the audience is split. We're getting no. a lot of plus ones, Jeb, and a lot of plus I ones. I think more Smay. people d- agree with you, though, which I is fair. I think more people do agree with me. Fa- I, but the thing is, I have the more popular opinion. Obviously, yeah. Smay has the unpopular opinion here, so we got to give him the benefit of the doubt on that. I don't think he's right, but I want you guys to make sure that you guys get all of your opinion. Look, here's the thing, guys. Smay and I both agree. We are going to see a massive rally in the next six months, and we both agree we're going to $100,000. And the simple fact of the matter is, Smay has a lot of reason to believe that. So just because I disagree with him doesn't mean he's right. Doesn't mean he's wrong. There have been times where Tim has disagreed with me, which, by the way, please be praying for Tim. He has a cold right now, and that's why he's not on today. 
There are plenty of times where I have been dead wrong, and Tim or Smay have been completely right. You look at it in the price prediction. So I don't want any hate on Smay. I think it's great that we don't always agree exactly. So that's really cool. Definitely yeah. make sure you guys I mean, check that out. Look, I'm just saying you guys, you guys are getting a little too excited that it, like it's there's only two months left mm -hmm. or three months, but three months left really. Like I, I it, it's possible, but I just think like, it, but does it matter? Like here's what I here's also the thing. Why, why December versus March, you're still going to get 100,000 Bitcoin. Just hold. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter what my prediction is at the end of the day. Yeah. Because it's, I still Seriously. believe it's going to 100,000. If you just hold maybe an extra two months, you're still going to get 100 yeah, Bitcoin. Yeah, exactly, guys. That's the point to take away from this is not doesn't happen in December. It doesn't happen in March. Here's the deal. It's going to happen almost certainly. Look, we can't predict anything for certain. But the simple fact is everything that I can find, more or less, the vast majority of what we can find is calling for that $100,000 Bitcoin in the next several months. With that said, guys, we're going to read a couple of super chats here and then we're we're going to wrap it out. Uh, let's see. What do we have? Do we have any new Super Chats here? I want to give a shout out real quick to Handyman10. Uh, uh, DD also donated. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, looks like that's all we got. Thank you guys so much for your Super Chats. Hopefully I'm not missing any. Uh, yeah, guys, thank you for those super chats. And guys, remember, we are brought to you today by Lux Algo. So definitely check the link down below. You got 20% off coupon code right down there. And if you guys do enjoy today's stream, make sure to hit that like button. We got over 2K likes. I don't remember the last time we got over 2K likes here on Coffee and Crypto Live. And guys, also make sure to subscribe to the channel. I think that's actually all we got for you today. If you guys haven't already, also make sure to follow us on our social media. You can find us at Crypto Jeb all over the place. We are on Twitter and Instagram at Crypto Jeb. We're on Facebook. You can find that link down below. We're on TikTok. I think it's at Crypto Jeb official that links down below we're also on reddit r slash jedi knights so make sure to check that out and also if you're interested in joining the membership program you can do that down below it helps out our channel and we're trying to build a community with you guys i'm hoping that we can get some kind of discord server or forum or something set up where you guys can interact we're hopefully working on something like that behind the scenes so that's not promised by the way but i'm hoping that we're gonna end up doing that but guys that's actually all i got for you today Smay, is there anything i'm forgetting um no. I don't think so. Nope. That's all I got for you today, guys. Before I go, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching. As always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.